Hey everyone, this is Nick with Big Data Linux, and I want to show you how you can get up and running on the ACM Data Mining Hackathon on Big Data, hosted here on the uh, Kaggle platform. And today I'm going to show you how to do this in the cloud um, on Amazon Web Services. And if you're interested in getting started on AWS, uh, Amazon Web Services has graciously donated Big Data or Linux uh, some funding for the hackathon. So if you're interested in getting uh, some credits for using them in this Big Data competition, uh, send me an email, nick at bigdatorlinux.com, and I can get you uh, some credits to get you up and running and running some of these examples that I'm going to go through. So if you don't know how to sign up for an account or you just want a quick, uh, a quick overview of how to do that, if you go to my website, bigdatorlinux.com, I have a tutorial that shows you how to get up and running in the cloud with Amazon Web Services and a free um, AMI that I've created uh, called Big Data Linux, um, which is a from scratch uh, Linux distribution for data science. Okay, so after you've signed up your account, we're going to want to go to the AWS Management Council, sign in with your credentials. Click on EC2. Click on Launch Instance. Continue. Community AMIs. Public Images. And type in Big Data, which is B-I-G-D-A-T-A-R. And this, this takes a little bit to uh, get the results back. So I'm just going to pause it until they come. Okay, and after the results come, you can see I have an image out here for the hackathon um, with a bunch of the data preloaded and already in a uh, database for you. So you go ahead and select that image. You're going to want to either use um, an M2 dot extra large with a little bit of memory and a little bit more uh, compute resources, um, an M1 dot large, or a C1 dot extra large if you're doing some computationally intensive things with uh, Graph Lab. But for the example here, we're just going to take an M1 dot large, continue, and just take the defaults here. So you can click continue, defaults here are fine. Give it a name so you know what it is. Continue. Um, if you already have a key pair, just you know use whatever one you want. If you don't, just go ahead and create one. Uh, give it a name here. Uh, create and download, um, and then it'll continue from there. You'll want a security group with the SSH port open. If you don't know how to create a security group, it's really easy. Just click create, give it a name, give it a description, click on SSH, add the rule, and then you're done. Continue. And then go ahead and launch that instance. And you can see it's pending. This takes a little bit to uh, boot up. So I'm going to go ahead and pause until it starts up again. All right, once you pass static status checks, just go ahead and click on it, highlight it, highlight this uh, URL here, open up a shell. Let me focus this a little bit better. All right, and then you SSH the default user is play, and then paste in the URL you copied. Say yes. Default password is play. All right, and then you're in. 
So the first thing I like to do actually is run a screen session. That way for uh, big long jobs, I can actually detach the screen session so the process keeps running in the, uh, in the background. So all you do is type screen, uh, hit space, and you're in a screen session. Uh, so what this does, it allows you to uh, attach and detach this shell uh, from the uh, original running instance here. And that way you can run long jobs, detach them. So right now, if you do control A, control D, it's detached. And now I'm in the, uh, the standard shell. But if I want to get back to the previous state of the other shell that I was in, I just reattach it and now I'm back in. So in the home directory here, oh, one thing if you want um, coloring and whatnot, just source your bass aliases and then uh, everything's back to normal. I need to fix that. But anyways, um, if you go into examples, uh, the, actually the examples directory is a little bit stale. So what we need to do is remove it. And go to my GitHub. Here's my handle. Uh, go to this Big Data Linux examples and then click on the ACM comp folder and you can see uh, I have some steps in here for us to run. But go back to that root folder. Grab the uh, read only link. Go back to your shell. Paste that in there. Run this command, and it'll clone the most recent snapshot into the uh, examples directory. And you can see we have a ACM comp folder. And here's all the stuff. So all you do is right away you go into step one. And in every single folder, there's a file called run me. You just go ahead and run it. So all this does is it launches uh, Postgres. If you want to see, so uh, there's a lot of things baked into this image. Um, and if you open this old run me, you can kind of see just everything that I did that I eventually just baked into the image. So uh, you guys didn't have to run this script to kind of get started. But it just goes through, creates the schemas and loads the data um, and then installs Madlib on your schema. And so all of that's all of that's already in here. So now that we have Postgres running, we can go to step two. And what this does uh, goes through and just creates uh, some mapping tables to map the user IDs and all the different um, uh, nasty string characters to uh, integer IDs, so we can do some matrix computations on that stuff. Um, and then just a little bit of cleanup afterwards. So I just go ahead and run the run me file on that. And this takes a little bit. But it should give you some success. There you go. All right, now that that's done, and if you wanna see what some of this stuff is writing out, you can poke around in the code, but everything gets written to uh, the mount directory. And inside the mount directory, if you go into the big data folder, whoops, this is the original stuff. So this is the stuff that's uh, out on Kaggle. And then you can go into the small data folder and you can see that's uh, everything on cattle on Kaggle. But going back to our uh, examples, we just did step through, so now, step two. So now we just go into step three, and all this does is create a couple quick benchmarks. So what we do best five is just literally getting the top five SKUs to use for recommendations, and this one all it's doing is going through and getting the top five SKUs uh, per category. So the top five uh, click counts per category. 
And this takes quite a bit to run, so expect that, um, roughly about 30 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is kick it off and let it run. So this will take uh, a little bit to run. The best five comes out relatively quickly, but the other one takes a little bit. Now, if you wanna let this run and go poke around inside Big Data Analytics, you can do Control A, Control D, and it actually detaches. So now I can go into, and even if for whatever reason your SSH connection gets interrupted, uh, that query will still be running in the background. It's not a problem. All you do is SSH back into it. And you can run a screen list and you can see that there's um, a screen session still running in the background. So all you do to reattach it and it'll resolve by a unique name. So you could actually just do that but if you have other screen sessions running, you can run multiple screen sessions. Um, you just do you know, 14 and it'll reattach and you can see everything's uh, running just fine. So I'm gonna let that run and be back. All right, after that's done, we can go into step four. Which actually goes through, extracts the uh, query and click matrices. Uh, that's all it's doing. And then running a matrix factorization. So we're using GraphLab to compute um, an alternating least squares matrix factorization on the uh, query matrix. As you can see, residual mean starts to uh, converge after a few iterations there. I mean, this is a pretty uh, naive approach, but I'm just trying to kind of um, take you through some steps here to get you off the ground relatively uh, quickly, and then you can start uh, taking things from there. Some things to look at are, I mean, this is, you know, really something you can start looking at the uh, search terms and doing some disambiguation on those and trying to figure out, um, you know, some predictive interesting uh, variables from that stuff. Okay, that is it. And if you look in mount, you can see that we now have um, these are the two files that are the uh, factorized matrices, the query features, and the uh, uh, SKU features. After that's done, we are ready to run step five, which is compute our recommendations. This takes an awfully long time to run. I apologize. It takes uh, about two hours. So again, just go ahead and let it run watch some YouTube videos on machine learning. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and detach this process. Um, you can poke around Big Data Linux and learn some things about it. And in the meantime, I'm gonna pause again and come back. While that's running, I actually wanna to go to the uh, database and show you what's inside that. So to get into the database, you just run PSQL, ACM, hit return, and now we're inside the uh, Postgres database. If you do a backslash D, you can list all the tables there, and you can see here's all the uh, tables that are preloaded into, uh, into the Postgres instance, and we can you know, just peek in the data at some of these. You know, so you can see we have a, uh, you know, the user ID, SKU, category, all that stuff. But the main table um, you, you can concern with and use is actually this uh, big data train IDs. And what's in here is everything converted into, oops. everything converted to IDs. So we start with a user ID here that's converted to um, some ID. A SKU, SKUs now have integer IDs. Uh, categories have category IDs. Um, even queries, you know, has a, you know, this query has a query ID. 
Um, and then the timestamps of the click time and query time. So both these tables, I guess it just exists for the uh, big data, but you can modify the SQL scripts um, however you like and you know change them for the small data set or you know modify them to do um, some different aggregations other than just a basic count star on stuff and see where that gets you. Uh, the other thing this database has in it though is a um, installation of Madlib, which is an in-database uh, machine learning project and has quite a lot of really cool utilities. So one thing I really like and use quite frequently with Madlib is to just get profile statistics on particular tables. So I go into big data train IDs, I can actually select Madlib schema profile and I want to do a full profile of this table and I want to do 10 buckets. So this basically goes through and does a bunch of histograms and whatnot. So like if you want to see the top, um, you know, the most frequent 25 values, you do that. But actually we'll, we'll just do five for example purposes. Um, and you just run that and it goes through and every single column, it goes through and does um, a complete profile of that column. Now, and it takes, it's gonna take a little bit just cause it's a, a fairly large data set. But after that's done, I'll come back. Hey guys, I wanted to go one, over one other thing uh, while we're waiting for stuff to run. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of a manic mess and like to use these, um, you know, crazy terminals. But if you don't necessarily want to use a terminal, you can actually kick up one of these instances and connect your favorite, um, you know, uh, GUI-based uh, uh, database uh, terminal, or uh, I guess it's not called a terminal. Um, I don't know what you call those things. Uh, but if you want to connect one of those to the Postgres instance, all you do is in your security groups, When we created our uh, security group in the uh, tutorial, instead of just opening up, uh, if you look, this one probably just has SSH open. Instead of just opening up a SSH, you can create a custom rule, um, unless they have Postgres on here. Nope. So just create a custom rule, and the default port for Postgres is 5432. You can actually open up that port uh, to the public, add that rule, and restart and launch your instance with 50, with this security group that we've just created. So it's SSH, probably give that a different name, but this is just examples. Um, and you can connect, uh, you know, given the uh, pass now, all you do is go to, um, go back to the instances, and after you'll have to restart it or start it initially and create a security group with that Postgres port open, um, grab this and, you know, whatever your client is, be it toad or, you know, anything like that, you actually just pass them this URL and then give them the port, uh, 5432. And you're off and running uh, with a uh, GUI client. So you don't have to use the, uh, command line and you can run queries and whatnot and use, uh, you're running instance as a database server.